In today's history video, I'd like to talk about the history of the House and Senate Intelligence Committees. Uh, first of all, let's begin with Pat Moynihan's wonderful observation, never confuse intelligence with intelligence. <laughs> the, uh, and the Intelligence Committee history is, of course, closely linked with the history of the CIA and covert operations, and now comes into special scrutiny because of the revelation that the Benghazi uh, episode was all about shipping arms to the Syrian rebels in violation of the curfew on those shipments placed by the intelligence committees. Uh, the CIA uh, emerged from World War II, and when Eisenhower became president, he saw it as the modern equivalent of military action. He believed that with the atomic bomb, you could no longer have wars, and that if we wanted to accomplish something with our foreign policy using force, the way to do it was covert operations through the CIA. And they had two enormous successes in the early days of the Eisenhower presidency. Uh, leftists took over in both Iran and in uh, Guatemala. Uh, it didn't matter that in both cases they were democratically elected, and in neither case were they really Castro-type communists. But in any case, they were too far left for our liking. And in both countries, the CIA, on Eisenhower's orders, staged coup d'etats uh, in Guatemala, persuading the president to resign by flying two propeller planes low over the palace, which the president realized they could come back with bombs next time, and he got out of there. Uh, in Iran, it was largely a British operation, but the American part was run by Kermit Roosevelt, uh, Theodore Roosevelt's son. Uh, the success of those operations led to the planning for the Bay of Pigs invasion in Cuba, which, as you know, was a fiasco, and then ushered in a whole series of missteps by the CIA, assassination plots of Castro working with the Mafia to try to kill him, with Bobby Kennedy overseeing that. And then in the 70s, under Nixon, uh, the CIA was very much implicated in the ouster and murder of Allende, uh, who is a again democratically elected leader of Chile, uh, who seemed to be veering towards socialism and communism. And uh, he was assassinated in a coup uh, orchestrated in part by the CIA. And military coups in Brazil and Argentina that also opposed leftist regimes were also fomented by the CIA. In the meantime, by the way, they had stopped communists from winning electoral victories in France and Italy by covertly intervening in the politics of those countries and funding non-communist political operatives. All this came, became public in the mid-1970s when hearings were conducted by Senator Frank Church, a liberal Democrat from Idaho. And this was on the heels of the anti-war movement, the revulsion against Nixon having secretly invaded Cambodia without telling the American people. And it led to a whole series of exposés about the dirty tricks of the CIA. And a movement arose to rein the agency in. So in 1976, Congress established the House and the Senate Intelligence Committees which would be bipartisan committees, 50-50, with the Democratic and Republican chairman in each house. I mean, a chairman and a ranking member, but still bipartisan. Uh, and set up a statutory requirement that before the, the administration could engage in any covert activity, it had to make a proposal to the Intelligence Committee. The Intelligence Committee had to examine it and then rule on it and approve it. The reason the whole Congress wasn't consulted and there was this special committee is nobody trusted the Congress not to leak it. If you give it to 535 people, it'll end up in the newspapers. And the members of the Intelligence Committee have been fantastic about not leaking the information that they've been given. There's yet to be a serious leak by the committee in either house. Uh, and the committee scrutinizes all covert operations and lends their approval. Uh, the, one of the big problems with the Iran-Contra operation is that it was conducted outside of the purview of the intelligence committees, uh, which was one of the important elements in it being illegal and almost leading to Reagan's impeachment. So the intelligence committees have a long history and a great deal of credibility. Uh, this is relevant now because it is very clear that the committee did not sanction aid to the Syrian rebels back when the Benghazi operation was taking place when the administration was, in fact, aiding the Syrian rebels. 
technically the administration is going to try to hide behind the charade of deniability that it was just gathering up the weapons in Libya to take them away from Al-Qaeda and from weapons dumps where they could be used by Al-Qaeda, and somehow they ended up in the hands of the Syrian rebels, uh, shipped there by somebody, shipped there on Turkish ships, we don't know how. I think as we dig further, we'll learn very specifically of CIA involvement. But it's important to understand the background of the intelligence committees to understand why this is a gross violation of law. Thank you.